Hello, in this video we're going to look at monopoly profit maximization in the case where the monopoly is making a economic loss and then decides to shut down to help minimize losses. Here is the monopolist inverse demand and its cost function. We're going to maximize profit by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Marginal revenue, we're going to get the revenue function first. Revenue is price times quantity, where P here is going to be this 12 minus 0.3Q. So we replace P with the inverse market demand, and that's all multiplied by Q. And simplifying a little bit, we have 12Q minus 0.3Q squared as a firm's revenue function. We take the derivative of that revenue function with respect to Q. And we get back this result, so the derivative of 12q is 12, and the derivative of minus 0.3q squared is going to be minus 0.6q. You take this 2 on this exponent and bring it down in front, so that's where the 0.6 is coming from, 2 times 0.3. And then we subtract 1 from that exponent, leaving us with just q raised to the power of 1, or just q. Marginal cost is another derivative concept, the derivative of the cost equation with respect to q. And we get back the following result here. Uh, the derivative of 10 is 0. The derivative of 20q is 20. The derivative of minus 2q squared is minus 4q. And then this last term here, its derivative is 0.3q squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set both of these equations equal to one another and solve for q. So our marginal revenue and marginal cost that we derived, setting both equations equal to one another, and now simplifying, we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. So 20 minus 12 is where this 8 is coming from. And then we're going to add 0.6q to both sides. So minus 4q plus 0.6q is where this minus 3.4q is coming from. And now we have a quadratic equation. So we're going to use a quadratic e for formula. So a is this 0 0.3 b is this minus 3.4, and c is 8. So we're going to make those substitutions in right here. So once again, this b here is this minus 3.4, a is the 0 0.3, and c is 8. And now just simplifying. And simplifying some more. The square root of 1.96 is 1.4. And we're going to have two roots here, so 3.4 plus 1.4 is 4.8, and that divided by 0.6 is 8. And the other root here, which we're going to ignore, uh, 3.4 minus 1.4 is 2. Dividing by 0.6, we get an answer of 3 and a third. We're going to ignore this. It's going to be the profit minimizing point. And profit actually at this output level here is, uh, is minimized at minus $21.48. Uh, in fact, what's happening here graphically is that the marginal revenue curve is intersecting marginal cost when marginal cost is sloping downwards. So we're going to ignore that. And now when Q equals 8, we plug that into the inverse market demand and we get a price of $9.60. And in terms of average cost, we're going to take our cost equation and we're going to divide that through by Q. So dividing each term by Q. And now evaluating average cost at 8 units of output. This firm has an average cost of $11.65 at 8 units of output. And here we'll notice that the price is less than average cost. So this firm is making an economic loss. If we wanted to calculate the loss, or the negative profit in this case, we can use this formula, price minus average cost times the quantity would give us total profit. So this firm's total profit here at 8 units of output is negative at $16.40. Because of the negative profit here, we need to check whether the firm should shut down to minimize losses. So it might be in the firm's best interest to actually produce nothing. Instead of producing 8, maybe this firm should produce nothing. And the shutdown rule here is if the price is less than the average variable cost, the firm should shut down, which is equivalent to saying if the total revenue is less than variable cost, the firm should shut down. We're going to look at both of these here. So let's first check if price is less than average variable cost. If it is, the firm would want to produce nothing. So here's our variable cost. 
to get average variable costs, we're going to take variable costs and divide that equation through by Q. So each term is going to divide it through by Q. 20Q divided by Q is just 20, minus 2Q squared divided by Q is just minus 2Q, and so on. And now plugging 8 into this equation, Q equals 8, plugging 8 into average variable cost, we see that average variable cost is $10.40. So this firm should shut down. Price of $9.60 is less than average variable cost of $10.40. So the firm would actually minimize its losses by shutting down. Uh, let's double check our answer by checking if total revenue is less than variable cost. So total revenue is price times quantity. Here's our variable cost equation. You'll notice if I divide both sides through by Q, we just get uh, price less than average variable cost. Okay, so anyways, let's check if this holds true. So plugging 8 in for Q, solving this firm's revenue from operating cannot even cover its cost of its variable input, so this firm should shut down. So the firm's revenue cannot even cover the cost of variable inputs, so the firm should not use variable inputs, and therefore it should shut down. And if the firm shuts down, which it should do, Q equals zero, profit at Q equals zero is as follows. Profit as always is revenue minus cost. So our revenue here when you shut down is zero. You're not producing anything. You're not selling anything. Our cost, however, does not disappear. Uh, we will have fixed cost. All those terms here get zeroed out except the fixed cost. And so that will be the firm's loss here, the minus $10, which represents fixed cost. So when the firm shuts down, its profit will equal minus its fixed cost. If the firm operated at Q equals A, you'll notice its economic loss is larger. It's larger than $10. So again, the ideal thing here for the firm to do is to shut down prices less than average variable cost. All right, I'll stop here.